Oscar Wilde once wrote, memory is the diary that we all carry about with us. But many of us won't get to keep our diaries forever. By 2050, 12.5 million Americans will have Alzheimer's disease, and we still don't have any preventative therapies. Our brains are composed of vast networks of neurons, allowing complex functions like memory to emerge. Neurons form these networks by communicating with each other at the synapse, magnified here connecting neurons A and B. These connection sites are so important that many studies have shown that synapse loss best correlates to memory loss, behooving us to look to the synapse for clues. So, when we examine vulnerable synapses of Alzheimer's patients, we observe increased calcium in one part of the synapse. Calcium is essential for neuronal function and communication, thus it is tightly controlled. When it isn't, we observe signs of stress in the neuron. But we still don't know exactly how increased calcium alters the synapse. That's where I come in. My work focuses on a specific receptor that controls calcium release from calcium stores. Imagine the receptor as a faucet. In the healthy synapse, the faucet can turn on and off. In Alzheimer's disease, this faucet is constantly on, leading to increased levels of calcium. But what does this mean for the synapse? To answer this, I decided to examine the proteins that make up the synapse, as proteins are the building blocks for synaptic function and health. To do this, I use a genetically modified mouse with a mutation in this receptor, which mimics the leaky calcium faucet. From healthy and mutated mice, I isolate the synapses from their brains, and I feed them through a machine called a mass spectrometer, allowing me to compare what proteins and how many of them make up these synapses. This is exciting because for the first time, we can now identify which proteins are increased or decreased due to excess calcium. One especially exciting finding is that there are higher amounts of the protein GLOW1 in pink in the unhealthy synapse. From prior work, we already know GLOW1 helps to eliminate toxic, damaging molecules and neurons. So I hypothesize that GLOW1 is the neuron's defense system against the damage caused by excess calcium. Now, like me, you may be wondering, could GLOW1 be a therapeutic target to help protect synapses earlier on and prevent disease? That's what my research will seek to test next and illuminate. While this leaky calcium faucet is relevant to Alzheimer's disease, we observe this phenomenon in aging and even long COVID. So we must demystify the how. Only then can we dream of a world where we all get to keep our diaries.